Why the flux is no one talking about flux core? Cause no one gives a flux, man. You're part of the problem. Flux out of my shop. Welcome to Orlando, Florida, home of the notorious Jason Becker and Underground Metalworks, where Jason teaches future welders just like you. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between self-shielded uh, flux core and gas-shielded flux core. Uh, both processes are a lot of times overlooked by the current generation, as well as a lot of folks in manufacturing and in the industrial sector. But I mean, these processes, they save a whole lot of time, they save a whole lot of money. We get good penetration, good deposition. And we're just going to show you the differences between the two for folks that are in industry and folks that want to do it at the house. What's the big difference between self-shielded and dual shielded? The self-shield is going to be shielded by the, the wire itself. It actually has flux inside the wire with different uh, alloying elements that are going to create CO2 essentially when we weld. So that's going to protect our weld pool. The gas shielded, we're going to rely on usually a 75-25 mix or maybe 100% CO2 to provide additional shielding but it has different elements inside, different flux uh, on the inside of that wire. Self-shielded flux core is gonna be great for home hobbyists. We can use it on thin material all the way up to unlimited thickness. It's great for outdoors. Uh, it's good in windy conditions. Certain manufacturers will say that their wire is, uh, is rated for up to 50 mile an hour winds. I wouldn't personally recommend that, but uh, it can be done. So a lot of times you'll see that on like structural steel ironwork, whereas the gas shielded, that's great for in-house manufacturing. So if you reach the upper limits of your short circuit MIG welding, let's say, you know, 035 or 045 short circuit, we've got a plate thickness limitation of anything greater than 5 16 of an inch. If I don't want to go out and buy a machine capable of pulse spray, you know, to get out of position, what I can do is just change out my wire type to a gas shielded flux core. I'm gonna get better deposition rates, much better penetration, and I'm gonna be able to weld in all positions. So that's primarily the difference between the two. And in both of these wires are something that at-home hobbyists can do. Uh, so if I have something at the house that's greater than 5 16 instead of trying to run short circuit MIG wire on there and chancing the lack of fusion, or switching over to stick welding, which you know I may not be good at stick welding, or and it just creates a big mess. There's a lot of smoke and fumes and stuff like that. I could switch over to gas shielded flux core and get you know good penetration, good beat appearance, and knock the job out. Why does it need gas if it's flux cord? It's a good question, Bo. <laughs> <laughs> and no, honestly, it's it's some it's whatever the the elements inside the wire are. Some dude in the lab coat figured that out. The the different formulations that they put in there. I feel like that is one of the biggest things that people just don't understand about it. Why would I even use flux core if it requires like that's the bonus of using flux core in my opinion. You know, the self shielded. I don't need to have a, a tank of gas. If I'm gonna be out in the field, you know, if I'm gonna be making uh, moment connections or I have a lot of welding to do, I get electrode efficiency of about 80%, whereas with stick welding, you know, I might be down to 60%. I'm also going to increase my travel speed, the amount of weld I can actually put into a part in a specific amount of time. With stick, I'm kind of, kind of limited. You know, a 14 inch electrode is gonna produce a six inch weld roughly. So every six inches, I gotta stop, I gotta chip, I gotta wire brush. Whereas with self-shielded flux core, I can just, you know, as long as I have enough gun to reach, you know, I can, I can just keep welding. And I see a lot of different letters, numbers. What does it all mean? The specifications for when it comes to flux core welding, whether it's self-shield or gas shield, it can be relatively confusing. Obviously, you know, we're running an E71T11 today. The E stands for electrode. The seven stands for 70,000 pounds of tensile strength. So unlike stick welding, where we multiply that 70 times 1,000, with flux core, we're gonna multiply that digit by 10,000. So we still get 70,000 pounds of tensile strength. The next digit is going to be a one or a zero. One is gonna indicate all positions. Zero is gonna indicate flat or horizontal only. And then you have a T, which stands for tubular. That could also be a C where you have cord, like metal cord wire. After that, it, you kind of get a little muddy. What I always recommend is look at the designation that's on the side of your wire and match that up with the manufacturer's recommendation because there's specific flux cores that are self-shielded, they're gas shielded, you can't switch them back and forth. Certain wires you have to run on DC negative. Most of your self-shielded you have to run on DC negative, but that's gonna be based off the manufacturer's recommendation. We wanna cross-reference that because certain wires, they're limited for thickness. So some of them you can only run to up to a quarter inch. Now we're back in the same area as when we were running short circuit MIG. So we wanna make sure we select the right wire for the job. You know, I wouldn't wanna go put a root pass in with a 7018 and you know, I wouldn't want to do a whole bunch of structural applications with a 6010. 
The best thing you can do is get, download one of the uh, catalogs from the manufacturer and make sure you're selecting the, the appropriate wire for the task at hand. Well, enough talk. Let's see what these things do. All right. All right, so let's talk about setup real quick. Anytime we're gonna switch out our wire, we wanna make sure we have the correct drive rolls. Running a flux core, that means we're gonna need, whether it's self-shielded or gas-shielded, we wanna have the knurled drive rolls. Those are the ones with the little teeth in them. And then we're gonna match the drive rolls up to the diameter of the wire. For this demonstration, we're gonna be running 045. So I have selected the 045 knurl drive rolls on the, uh, the ESOB 285IC. So Jason, before we get too deep in this, do I need a special type of machine? Nope, any constant voltage machine, uh, any machine that you can MIG weld with, you're gonna be able to run flux core self-shielded or flux core gas shielded. You just gotta make sure you got the appropriate diameter of wire and your machine's big enough to push the diameter of wire you're trying to run. If you have a smaller machine at the house, you can step down to like an 030 maybe even a 035 diameter 045 is kind of pushing it for most of your home hobbyist machines talking setup what do we do well with this wire this specific wire based off the manufacturer's recommendations again it's telling us we're need we're going to need to run this on dc electrode negative so i need to make sure that my gun and my drive rolls are hooked up to the negative terminal on the machine and my workpiece clamp more commonly referred to as a ground clamp uh, is hooked up on positive i have 245 inches per minute and 18 volts. This should yield somewhere around 200, 225 amps. All right, Jason, so diving into this self-shielded, what is your best advice for me on how to approach it? Everybody that's familiar with running constant voltage or, or short circuit MIG welding, they're gonna be able to do this. Anybody that can run stick welding, they're gonna be able to do this because the technique is kind of a toss up between both of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the trigger, we're gonna maintain a contact tip to work distance a little bit further than what we typically run with short circuit. So say for instance, short circuit, we're usually running quarter inch to three eighths contact mm -hmm. tip to work distance. With this setup, we're gonna run half inch to five eighths contact tip to work distance. We're gonna do a slow, steady drag because if there's slag, you drag, if there's gas, you push. And it's gonna be very similar to running a 7018, right? You're just gonna drag it right down the, uh, the route. We don't have to do any fancy manipulation. Pull the trigger, slow, steady drag, and you're off to the races. What kind of weld size do you want me to try to put uh, down? You're probably gonna, with this 045 wire, probably about 3 16 quarter inch. Okay, I think I can make that happen. All right, eyeballs. What do you think? Spicy. Typically, I know I want to kind of angle up a little bit on those, on this 2F position. I want to kind of angle all up, up a little bit, but it seemed like it didn't even want to drop down. Like I said, it, it runs pretty smooth. It's very similar to a 7018. 70, you don't have to fight the puddle. Just let the puddle do the work. You're just holding the gun, telling it where you want that puddle to be. Let's see the Look result. The it, it looks kind of cold. What do you think? You're the inspector. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so Jason, that didn't turn out the way we were hoping. It's not bad. I mean, we could use a little bit more tie-in on the toes. One thing I did notice when you were running it, your work angle was a little too steep. Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of bring that up, like I said, about five to 10 degrees. So instead of an exaggerated drag angle, five to 10. I mean, it, and most of the time, what I tell people is if you point straight in at it, you're going to be about the, the right angle because you're naturally going to tilt as you drag mm -hmm. uh, and then slow down on your travel speed just a little bit. Okay. Now this is definitely preheated. Yeah. You got a little bit of preheat in there. That's going to help. You know, it's three eighths thick material. We should be good to go. All right. Well, let's give it another run. Eyeballs. Okay, I have a question. Yep. Do I want to be on the leading edge of the puddle or sitting in the puddle? Because I, I saw I some different I typically run right at the leading edge of the puddle. Okay, that was another one of my problems was sitting too far back in the puddle. What do you think about the process overall? I think it's a great process. It's hot. It is hot. It's hot. Because I would see when I was on the leading edge of that puddle, it really punched super mm -hmm. hard. And that's why I would kick back into the puddle a little bit. Very similar. And that's, that's the problem a lot of people have with short circuit is they don't stay at the leading edge of the puddle. They stay kind of on top of it. So they're yeah. not really punching down inside the throat of that root. 
Well, let's see if I did any better. Let's check it out. <laughs> it's better. We still got a little bit of lack of fusion on the toes. That's Not too bad, though. I mean, you don't have any overlap, so overall, that's going to hold. Well, that was fun. How do we switch over to the dual shield? We already swapped out the spool of wire on the inside. We're going to use the same drive rolls because we're still using 045 wire. Neural drive rolls once again. But what's going to change is we're now going to swap over to a bottle of 7525 shielding gas. We're going to set this about 40 to 50 CFH on the flow meter. And then we're going to switch our polarity back to reverse polarity. So we're going to take our, our setup that our drive roll assembly is hooked up to, which is the positive. And then we're going to take our workpiece clamp and we're going to hook that into the negative. We're going to set about 26 volts. What's the technical term of when it turns into spray the transition current yeah there it so is. we're gonna yeah we're it. gonna we're actually with this process we're gonna switch over to a spray transfer we ran the self-shielded flux core that was more of a globular transfer this is gonna spray so you're gonna feel it's a little bit warmer on the back side of your hand gonna get a little spicy oh. why is it spice and it's really gonna punch into that material like i said if i'm using this in a shop environment Anything over 5 sixteenths, I'm going to switch over to a flux core gas shielded. You're going to see it, it runs very smooth. It's a very clean pass other than the slag that we have to take off after the fact. One thing you're going to notice is you're not going to have the little ripples inside of the weld where you typically did. It's going to look more kind of like a slug, mm. uh, but you'll see that once we lift the hood. Dual shield. How do I do this one? It's going to be very similar to when we ran the self-shielded. So you're going to maintain a contact tip to work distance between about a half inch and three quarters. Again, if there's slaggy drag, if there's gassy push, the slag is always going to supersede that, that rule. Same 5 to 10 degree travel angle, and then your work angle is going to be 45 degrees to the joint, so you shouldn't have any issues with it. Am I going to have to be cooking? I always tell people, base your travel speed off what your puddle's doing. So if it's trying to, uh, if it's getting too thin or high and ropey, slow down your travel speed. If it's getting too wide, you know, increase your travel speed a little bit. But you're going to maintain about 5 sixteenths of an inch uh, as you're going down that joint. Is this going to be a little too spicy? It's going to get a little warm. Well, good thing I stopped by that farmer's house this morning because he gave me these. Jeez, so you went from uh, welding to animal husbandry. You know, sometimes you got to get dirty. And when you get dirty, you got to have the right so equipment. You're, you're going to go elbow deep in this weld. I'm, I'm about to. All right, let's get it. Hi, Bo. I, I just fell in love, I think. It's spicy. That's very, well, not in these things. <laughs> I don't feel but nothing. It, it also runs really clean. Like I said, we're, we're dealing with a true spray transfer. Uh, some of the advantages of this process, we get good deep penetration. One of the disadvantages, we still have a little bit of cleanup, but we also don't have to deal with any spatter. Yeah. So I'll trade a little bit of slag over a bunch of spatter any day of the week. I didn't even think about the spatter. Yeah, I would say, that's pretty slick. Nine out of 10 would pass. That's not bad for your first pass on flux core gas shield though. First pass ever. So it's, it's super simple to run. It's easy to teach somebody how to do it. Uh, I've actually certified a lot of different companies and, and convinced them to switch over to this process versus trying to fight every battle with short circuit MIG. Now they got another tool in their arsenal. Considering this is flux core, what would happen if we take away the gas? Well, this is highly unrecommended. Uh, this isn't something that I would ever do. Uh, because the wire is specifically designed to be ran with that gas composition, be it 7525 or 100% CO2. But let's go ahead and see what happens if we don't use the shielding gas. I think you're going to notice a big difference right off the bat. So that actually sounded like it ran a lot better than I thought it was going to, but let's go ahead and take the slag off and see what's underneath. All right. Well, that's different already. Well, you're using a chip and hammer to clean it. You might want to use a grinder. Uh, yeah, we, we are seeing some major porosity in there. Yep. That looks terrible. Oh, it's And bad. we got a ton of porosity because we don't have gas. What would happen if we ran gasless flux core with the extra layer of protection of gas? Once again, I don't think it's going to work out well for us, but let's try it. So we went ahead and we got the wire switched back to self-shielded flux core. We're on DC negative once again, or electrode negative. And the only thing we're doing is we're gonna add gas. I bet it's gonna make it even better. Okay, we'll see. 
Let's see. Oh yeah. It definitely sounded a lot more aggressive. The splatter. Almost like a, a short circuit, a lot more spatter going on. I definitely wanted to treat it like short circuit there too. <laughs> Let's go ahead and clean it up too to look like. It's beautiful. It does look a lot better than I, uh, I thought it would. We would have to do a fill it well brake test because I think by adding that gas, we're changing the mechanical properties of what the manufacturers anticipated that wire being used for and how it's supposed to be used. What are the pros and cons between the two wire types? So let's start off with the self-shielded flux score. Some of the pros with self-shielded flux scores, I get good deposition rates, I can weld in all positions, I can take it outdoors, I can weld in windy conditions, I don't have to worry about toting a bottle with me, so it's relatively portable. I mean, I can hook up a self-shielding uh, apparatus with just a, a suitcase and an engine drive welder, and I can get pretty much anywhere I can get with stick welding. Some of the cons are, it's gonna produce a lot of spatter. I got a, quite a bit of cleanup, you know, so I've got slag I have to deal with, I have some spatter. Gas shielded flux score, again, I get good deposition rates, I get great penetration, I can weld in all positions, uh, the weld looks good once I'm done. Easy operator ability, once you learn how to set the machine up, I mean, ease of use is, you know, astronomical. It's probably one of the easiest processes to learn how to use, especially when we take it out of position. Again, some of the disadvantages are, I got quite a bit of cleanup once I get done because I got to take that slag off, hit it with a wire wheel, but I also don't have to do it with a bunch of spatter. Which one pays more? It really depends. I would probably say that your self-shielded applications only because most of the time workers in the field, they're going to get paid a little bit more than shop welders because you have to deal with all the elements. You've got to tote your equipment where you need to go. Gas shielded flux score, you know, I probably have a nice little bench at the shop. My machine's on wheels. Uh, the boss might be uh, nice enough to you know, loan me some air conditioning. So it's, it really depends on the work environment, the type of work that you're engaging in. But I would say more often than not, self-shielded flux score is probably gonna pay a little bit more than gas shielded flux score people in the shop. Jason, I just wanna say thank you so much. This has been so much fun. It's the first time I've ever gotten to run dual shield and I just appreciate you teaching me the way of the slug. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, come out here and check out the school. If anyone wants to learn more about flux core welding, where should they go to get trained? Hopefully their employer is gonna provide training, but if not, they can stop by uh, Underground Metalworks here in Orlando, Florida. You can find out more information at underground-metalworks.com or check us out on Instagram at Underground Metalworks. Thanks again, Jason. No, no problem. My man.